All right. Hey, everybody, it's Ellen Lewis from Crazy For You. And tonight I wanted to share with you another one of the beautiful collections from this season from Rowan. Um, this is a new kind of line. I mean, it's not new this season, but this is edition three. So this is its third season. They started um, last summer. And it's a collection by Quail Studio. And I think it's just really, really pretty. And for me, it kind of fills a little bit of the gap that um, Kim Hargreaves collections used to fill. I'm so sad that she retired, but I think when you look at these designs, I think you'll really, really like them. So welcome everybody. Hi, Sandy. Hey, Jal, Emily, Rita. Nice to see you guys. And I think we are also live on Instagram. So very happy about that. Finally figured that out and that's kind of new and cool. So anyway, um, we had some 60 degree weather here today, which was absolutely amazing and wonderful. And it just gets me so excited about spring. I am, I am ready. I am tired of my winter clothes. Tell me in the chat if you're tired of your winter clothes also. Um, so, hey everybody. Yep. Good, good. Nice to see you. Um, Anyway, I am tired of my winter clothes. I am ready for spring things. And this is a fun collection. I think um, that you will really like these designs by Quail Studio. As you know, Quail Studio is um, run by two younger women and their vibe is very timeless, but also fresh and modern. So they definitely have kind of a more youthful take on not only the designs that they do, but sort of the way that they style them. And I think you'll really enjoy seeing this. So let me go ahead and bring this up and show you what we got. All right. So um, edition three by Quail Studio. And the first thing I want to point out is they have used a lovely um, normal sized model in here. She is um, fuller figured. You can see that she's kind of busty. And I think that's a really nice thing when you're looking at some of these designs. It really makes a difference to be able to see what those garments are going to look like kind of on a real, a real person, you know? So edition three, modern and sophisticated. These are the words that they use to describe this collection. Timeless, casual summer luxury. So for me, I think about them in terms of kind of a capsule wardrobe. You know, I'm big on capsule wardrobes. And these are just some of those pieces that I think fit really nicely into that. You know, you can wear them time and time again, and you can layer them, and you can they work with just about everything. So I love that. Um, the featured yarns in this collection are hand knit cotton, cotton cashmere, soft yak DK, and four seasons. So four of their most popular summer and spring and transitional yarns. So these are yarns that I think of as tra transitional, especially cotton cashmere, soft yak DK, and four seasons. Hand knit cotton is a straight up worsted weight cotton. But cotton cashmere and soft jack DK both have a little bit of animal fiber in there. So um, to me, they feel a little more transitional. And then Four Seasons, of course, has a gauge of 16 stitches over four inches. So that's going to be something that's going to be especially nice in the spring and the fall. So the first piece here is called Agapanthus. And I love the sort of the theme in this, they're all named after flowers. So very pretty. This is worked in hand knit cotton at a gauge of 20 stitches over four inches in a rib, um, a two rib. This is, you can also wear this if you're not comfortable with the bare arms, you could also layer this. Um, interestingly enough, this is worked top down in the round. You start up here at the shoulder and these ribbing increases are done with make ones rather than being worked bottom up and decreased. So it makes it a little easier to make the ribs look really nice. If you did this, you would want to pay attention to the weight, the, uh, the length of it, the waist. It's cropped. The smallest size is 20 inches long and the largest size is 24. So to me, that's a little bit cropped but I think this is really, really cute. 
Allium is a cabled cardigan, um, worked in soft jack DK, very pretty, pretty, four to six inches of ease, so it's not a super oversized sweater. Um, it's a raglan, so it's going to have a nice comfortable fit around the arm, beautiful cables, and those cables are, of course, charted. Let's have a look at this. I think I did a close-up of this because I think it's so pretty. Whoop, going the wrong way. Okay, look, look at those beautiful cables. If you hate boring knits, this would absolutely be your, um, your design. Isn't that pretty? That would be really fun to knit. And then the sleeves are a different cable, but um, also interesting. They're the cable that you see at the side here. So really pretty. And that soft jack DK is just so yummy to knit with. All right, now. Okay, this is called a stillby. This is very interesting, the way this is constructed. So it starts by working a panel of, um, call, it's called welting. Um, it's knit this way from, you know, this portion is knit side to side. So they do a uh, stockinette, reverse stockinette um, that forms almost like a ribbing. But anyway, that's called welting. And it, like I said, it's worked side to side. And then the top is picked up after and worked up. Um, it's a drop shoulder. But I just think this is so interesting and it gives such a different kind of look. Um, the bottom is picked up after as well, and you got a, a little bit of a one-one rib going on there. Tell me if you think this is interesting. I think it is really different looking. Crew neck, dropped shoulder, um, 10 to 12 inches of positive ease, so it's got a nice easy fit. I think it's really pretty. And this one is Azalea. This is one of those, what I call up and over garments. So it's worked from the bottom and then you do the neck and then you continue on up and then you do the back neck and then you work down the back till it's as long as the front. Um, that can be, it sounds really easy because there's no seaming, but it actually can be kind of tricky to, to knit. So um, yeah, so watch out for that. But I do think this is a really pretty one. And if you're comfortable with that, you know, up and over concept, it would be a very nice one to do. This has worked in the four seasons. So it is going to be a little bit of a thicker fabric, but it is open with that lace. So kind of pretty, huh? 14 to 16 inches of positive ease. And the lace pattern is super easy. I don't know why I said V-neck. It's not a V-neck. It's a crew neck. So this one is Cecilia. I like this one very, very much. This is a duster, um, nice and long. This is the kind of thing that really is a very nice transitional piece. Um, I love this deep ribbing at the lapel. I love all of this extra, this um, stitch work at the bottom. This kind of trim here right at the sleeve is part of what makes me say it's um, responding to Kim Hargreaves. These are the kinds of things she would do. I think this little bit of, of extra detail at the cuff, I think, is so pretty and just really, really special. So let's see. I have a comment here. What a time to see this on a bus from swimming with 24 gray two students. Guess what I'd rather be doing? Yes, indeed. You absolutely would, I am sure, rather be knitting. <laughs> but thank you for joining me. Very cool to have you. So tell me what you think about this. Um, I would like to make it a point. We often see these huge garments and we think, well, I mean, there's a lot of things we might think. I think they're beautiful. Um, there are a lot of knitting, but I also think, oh my gosh, how many balls of yarn is that? And how expensive is that going to be to make? Don't lie to me. I know you were thinking that too. But the thing about it is a couple things. First of all, like I said, the Four Seasons is 
Um, it's a, a solidly Aran weight yarn. So it's got, it knits at a gauge of four stitches to the inch. So it's not going to be as much knitting as you think. It's also very bouncy. So it's not going to lose its shape. Um, it's also light, you know, for a, a cotton to at that gauge, it's very light and it's also really budget friendly. So you could knit this garment for mm, 150, 160 bucks, depending on the size. So anyway, I think it's really pretty. And if you didn't do it in this pale pink, it could be a spring as well as kind of a fall garment. Tell me what you think about this one, whether this is something that you like. This one is hydrangea. And you know how we always, let me go back here a minute, because Mary has a comment, yes. Mary says it's gorgeous. Yes, I think so too, Mary, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so this is hydrangea. And you know how we're always talking about um, capsule wardrobes and um, what you do and don't wear and what's realistic in your life? At least I am. I'm always thinking, what do I wear every day that I'm comfortable in that I would like to knit instead of buy at the store? And I have a ton of customers who say, I only ever wear t-shirts, right? Well, this is a t-shirt that you can knit. This is something that you can knit in a color that you love and wear every single day because it's just that pretty. And that's why I like this particular, um, this collection. I think it is very, very wearable and very capsule wardrobe-y kind of friendly. So Hydrangea is worked in Soft Jack DK, lots of ease, simple crew neck. Um, like I said, it's an elegant t-shirt option, right? Um, Mayflower, again, in the four seasons, this, this is an easy lace pattern. It's not charted. It has a shaped armhole, which means it's like a set in sleeve and then they've trimmed around it. It's going to be a little or on the heavier side because we talked about four seasons cotton being a little bit heavy, but very pretty. And that would be nice, you know, either on its own or over a t-shirt or over a blouse, you know, whatever you would like to do with that. Okay, how much do you love this one? I think this is absolutely gorgeous. This is Peony, worked in hand-knit cotton. And um, so I got distracted by a comment that Amy has. So we'll come back to Peony. So let's look at Hydrangea. Okay, so Hydrangea, this is an interesting, Amy asked, what is hydrangea's sleeve construction? So it is a dropped shoulder. And since it has so much ease, we've talked about what happens when a drop shoulder design has 14 to 16 inches of positive ease. That means that the garment is intended to come down uh, three to four inches onto your arm. So this comes, this portion of the fabric comes all the way down, and then you have kind of a shallow, um, shallow sleeve on that. So it's an elbow length sleeve, but it's, it's rather short because you already have a good bit of the fabric created by the ease in the garment. So does that, does that answer your question, Amy, about the sleeve construction? All right. Peony is beautiful, isn't it? That looks so fun to knit and very, very busy to, you know, to keep your mind busy. Those of you who enjoy um, knitting to challenge your brain, this would be one. Where's Amelia tonight? This is something that she would really like. Um, it's warped in hand-knit cotton, modified dropped shoulder, which means rather than having a full-on shaped armhole like you might it just has the bind off so um for the armhole you just bind off maybe an inch worth inch worth of stitches and then work straight up which is nice because it, you don't get any of that um 
that shaping interfering with your cable stitches. So that just makes it a lot easier to knit rather than trying to work your decreases into your pattern. I think that's a very thoughtful gesture on their part when they designed that. I love that. So Christy, I see this in your future. What color would you do? Tell me. Betty likes hydrangea. Yep, very pretty. So we're going to get through most of these pretty quickly. Okay, petunia. This is another example of something that is a, um, a t-shirt alternative or just something that you're going to wear all the time. Most of these to me feel more spring and fall than solidly summer, except for maybe the, um, that first one that has the, uh, the straps. But this is definitely something that would be fun to knit. It's worked in seed stitch um, out of cotton cashmere. You can see that it has a drop shoulder construction. The neck is very, very shallow. So um, if you don't care for an ingenue neck or you know a bateau neck or whatever, you might want to deepen that neck just a tiny bit. Um, I had a I had a class at um, on Rowan Connect this past weekend on Sunday, and we talked a lot about um, adjusting sweaters and, and making them fit you. One of the things that you can do, and it's a super easy shift if you want to make that change for a neck that you find to be too, too tall or too close in, you know, a lot of people don't like things right up here around their neck. So what you would want to do is just start that neckline a little earlier. And then when you've done all of the shaping, then just work straight until your armhole is the size that it should be or the depth that it should be. That is a, a super easy fix to make if you wanted to make that adjustment on a sweater like this. Mm, okay, so that's Petunia. Cotton cashmere, drop shoulder, seed stitch, has this cute little ribbed hem, but you know, honestly, because it's seed stitch, you wouldn't have to do a hem at all. You could just do it in seed stitch with a nice smooth, um, you know, because seed stitch doesn't roll. You don't need the ribbed hem to keep it from rolling. Let's see, Barbara. I like the hydrangea. Yeah, it would be beautiful in a lot of colors. Yeah, it's a, it's a gorgeous design. I think they're they're all really pretty. Are there any that you don't like? Go ahead and tell me in the chat if there are any that you hate. It's always interesting. So, yeah, hydrangea is really wearable. Just in case you forgot, this is hydrangea. Just a simple crew neck t-shirty kind of thing. Okay, that's petunia. And then this is thistle. This is the only accessory in the collection. You've got um, soft jack DK, big diamond cable. So this is the, you know, is the cable twist right there. I'm going to look real quick at the, uh, at the chart here because I think the rest of those are just, um, those are just decreases. Uh, no, I'm wrong. Those are actually, actually little cables. Yep, those are all little cables worked right along up here. So you're cabling all the way up on either side of that diamond motif. So that makes it really fun. In between the cables, what you have, you see how you've got this kind of vertical and horizontal element? The horizontal element is um, just reverse stockinette. And this section right here is actually a twisted rib. So you know how when you do a twisted rib and then you stretch it, um, it kind of opens up in between. You know, those, those rib stitches twist on each other and you get space in between. So they've used that to, um, to open the fabric up and also to make those, those cable ribs sit a little bit proud. Um, it's a nice big shawl, 16 and a half by 68, and worked in soft jack DK. That would be just beautiful to wear, wouldn't it? Again, all season, that soft jack decay is beautiful every single season. Terry says, 
Cotton cashmere is a favorite yarn. Yep. Do you like it? I'm so glad you like it, Terry. Yeah. All right. Betty says, Petunia is not for me. What a nice way of saying that. Petunia is that one. So yeah, not a seed stitch girl. Okay. So that is thistle. Whoops. And this is wisteria. So this is cotton cashmere. Terry, this is for you. Um, a beautiful little vest or a shell. Super easy to do, just stockinette. I like this deep hem on it. Um, it's got a shaped armhole. I'm just going to tell you, this bothers me a little bit because I don't know whether it's too large for the model or whether the um, this shoulder width is too wide. But for me, when I think a shaped armhole, I don't want this extra fabric right here. So the point of having a shaped armhole is to have it nice and clean from armhole to shoulder. And I believe that the shoulder should sort of stop right there. So as we were talking about in the class on, sa on Sunday, you really want to think about um, what shoulder width you want. And it's a pretty easy fix if you wanted your shoulder width to be narrower. Just continue your decreases on up until your shoulder width is the width you want it to be. And then you could decide um, whether you wanted it to, you know, to uh, extend out over your arm with that trim right there. So, yeah. Okay, so that is the collection. And I think that that went pretty fast, didn't it? Wow, we're not even close to being done. So anyway, um, again, I do think that it's nice that they used a more life-sized model. And she, did you notice that she has a very full bust? And that might be part of why they have her in the, in the garments that are a little larger. I'm not sure. But that's something that you can, can control. If you have a large bust, you can make adjustments to make the garments fit you perfectly without you know, hanging on you. Um, it is a beautiful book, you know, like all of the Rowan publications, it feels solid. It's a, a nice heavy paper. The photography is beautiful. They obviously put a lot of thought into this collection and I really like it. I think it's, it's very nice and it uses all my favorite yarns for, for summer. I'm thinking that perhaps Next time, what I'll do is, maybe not this coming week, but in a week to come, I will do a review of their first collection, which is edition one. And kind of a different feel, but also designed for summer. Like I said, this came out last summer. And I didn't do a review of it. I'm not sure why. Maybe I just ran out of time. But um, lots of really pretty designs in this as well. Look at that on the cover. That's knit in summer light four ply. That's a lot of knitting, <laughs> right? So another thing about this collection is that all of the all of the yarns are what I call like reasonable knitting size yarns. The the four seasons has that gauge of four stitches to the inch, and the cotton cashmere and the soft yak decay are both twenty two stitches over four inches and the Hannock cotton is 20. So none of it is on really teeny tiny needles. So everything in this collection is something that you could actually knit in a realistic amount of time because the, there's, if there are very few sleeves and when there are sleeves, they're very short and small. So it just feels a little bit more accessible. Do you know what I mean? And tell me, tell me what you think about the, um, the model in this, you know, do you like seeing them on more real sized models? I think it's gives you so much better an indication of how it might look because, you know, you really don't know when you're dealing with a, a model model, you know, they're all size two and they're six feet tall. And this gal may be also very tall, but like I said, at least she has a full bust, which is something that we don't often see in pattern collections. So personally, I like that very much, but I'm interested in what you think about it. So let's see, would this be a good pattern for beginners? Um, Mary, I'm assuming that you're talking about wisteria 
as a good pattern for beginners? Tell me in the um Tell me in the chat if this is what you're talking about. But yeah, this would be a good a good pattern for beginners. Let's kind of look and see which ones might be good patterns for beginners. Um, I think petunia is a good pattern for beginners because it's just seed stitch and the the construction is simple. That's a good one. Um, peony doesn't have any complicated shaping. And when I think about sweaters that are quote unquote, good for beginners. When I think about that, I'm not thinking about whether the stitch pattern is complicated or not. Because most people who've been knitting but are new to sweater knitting have done cables and they've done a lot of fancy stitch work on scarves and things. So when I think about what's good for a beginner as a sweater, I'm thinking about what has a fairly simple construction that doesn't have a lot of fussy shaping. And that's one of the things about peony that I mentioned, and that is that you don't have to work your shaping into the armhole. So if you're comfortable with cables, but a newer sweater knitter, I absolutely think that this one would be good for a beginner. This one, maybe, um, again, if you're comfortable with the lace, it's not a hard pattern. Um, Maybe a little, a little less easy because your, your shaped armhole works into that lace. So that might be one that I would put off. Hydrangea would be an easy one. Very, very simple for a beginner to do. Cecilia, that's a lot of knitting. So beginners, I think it's good to have something that you can finish fairly readily. Azalea, definitely no. Astelby. Um, or a still be, I always pronounce that wrong. Sorry. Um, probably wouldn't be my first pick for a beginner, nor would allium because that's got a sewn raglan and that can be tricky, nor that one. So yeah, absolutely. If we had to go through, I would say that hydrangea, a peony, petunia would all be good and wisteria would all be good for beginners, Mary. So yes, absolutely. Any begin, oh, let's see. Bar Barbara, don't forget to hit the like. Oh, thank you, Barbara. If you're new to my channel and you are not already subscribed, I would love it if you would click that button. And when you do, if you're on YouTube, you'll get like a little sparkle, which is very fun. Um, so yeah, so definitely hit subscribe and I would love it if you would hit like. So thank you so much for that, Barbara. That was, that was very sweet and thoughtful. Oh, I'm looking at my face here on the screen. It looks very, very red, sorry. Um, just a little warm here. I hadn't expected it to be 60, 66 degrees today, but, but yeah. So would you like it if I did a, a review of the edition one, even though this came out a year ago? I think the patterns are, as they say, timeless and it's a different set of of yarns they use more of the summer light four ply in that collection but definitely capsule wardrobe kinds of garments so so maybe i'll do it as not as a live but i'll just make a, a video and post that so um yeah and while you're while you're there with a subscribing or liking or whatever if you click that little bell i know that you know that i go live every wednesday night at seven o'clock but i also put up videos and shorts and if you're interested in those if you click that little bell you'll get a notification when i have done that so let's see polly yes please oh hard to find good patterns for summer weight yarns okay yes absolutely we will do that then we will do that and that will be a lot of fun. So we'll just put that together. And then in the fall, when they come out with edition four, I will do a review of edition two as well so that we kind of stay in season because probably nobody wants to see designs for um, alpaca right now. We're all thinking moving forward in the summer. And I did want to let you know that I am going to be doing um, a knit along for this one that I talked about before. This was one that I mentioned in the newsletter and it is a, um, a pattern that was originally designed for felted tweed Aran, but I'm gonna work mine in this um, 
four seasons because it's the same gauge. And I think it'd be absolutely beautiful. And I think that'll be really nice. So if you're interested in that, I'll be doing that on YouTube and that will be a lot of fun. So yay. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at um, mode edition three. And I would be delighted to hear your comments about whether it reminds you of Kim Hargreaves. So, all right, until next time, thank you so much. Keep knitting and create something beautiful. See you next time.